It's the new stranger danger. And what's so disturbing is it could be happening to your kids in your house right now. Every time they log onto the internet, your children are exposing themselves to the very real danger of being stalked by online predators. And as I've discovered, these twisted individuals are cunning, very cunning, using every conceivable ploy to win over their young victims. Alarmingly, all too often they succeed, luring kids out of their homes to meet them, abuse them, and in some cases, even kill them. But now the police are fighting back. I've just been undercover with an elite team of cyber detectives as they turn the tables on these predators, beating them at their own game. Uh, we've identified him as a 42-year-old male. We know that he's married. He's been gradually uh, grooming her, um, saying how, how cute she is, how much he loves her. Boxy, that's him. He's just passed us. He's said that he he wants to have sex with her. Just uh, maintain a loose, very loose uh, as well, sex. And as well, he's completely exposed himself on webcam. Their undercover police from Western Australia's online child exploitation squad, led by Detective Senior Sergeant Sean Bell. We've got um, people watching his house. We're on our way to catch a pedophile. Boxy, just letting you know, I've caught sight of him and he has just turned left down Benchmore Road. Um, I'm about 500 metres behind him. He's on his way to meet a 13-year-old girl. Still heading straight down the corner. Yeah, no. Is he planning on having sex with her today in the car? That's what he said, yes. For four months now, the squad has been cyber spying on this 42-year-old father of two who has made his sick intentions clear online. He'll be coming up behind you very shortly. He's been in computer chat rooms and thinks he's convinced a 13-year-old to meet him in this family park. He's just entered the car park. Yes, that's him there. That's him there. Going round to the left. He's just parking up now. He's parked right next to me. Another cyber predator off the streets. Any problems with the, um, with the surveillance box? But there's plenty more where he came from. Each week in WA, this secret police squad catches at least one child sex offender trying to lure kids out of their homes. Nationally, more than 400 cyber pedophiles are caught each year. Okay, so He's engaged her, he's wanting to meet with her. Detective Inspector Darren Sevright oversees this tightly knit squad of online detectives. Yeah, he said online that he was going to have sex with her. Right. As kids spend more time connected to the internet and their predators become ever more cunning, their workload is exploding. Cyber safety is the stranger danger of this millennium. It is, it is every bit as important as don't talk to strangers in person the way that I was raised. Now it's don't talk to strangers online. But there are plenty of kids who still do. To protect them, these police are turning the technology against the pedophile, patrolling the chat rooms, pretending to be teenagers, acting as bait. Very few of our offenders are people who actually want to just uh, live out a fantasy online and then log off and not, not act on that. Um, these people are child sex offenders. They want to offend against children. And uh, when they feel comfortable enough with the child, they'll then seek to, to make that happen. Yeah, it was, it was my world, the computer. Uh, and that's where I wanted to stay until I did what I did. Terence Briscoe is a pedophile. He used the internet to target young girls and went as far as arranging to meet one. Tonight, in a rare insight, he tries to explain the unthinkable, what drove him to such depravity. My fantasies were, they were inexperienced. They were virgins? Yeah, that was my fantasy. So it didn't matter what age they were? Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's not, well, that's not quite true. I wouldn't go, you know, I mean, I'm, not, I'm talking about 13, 12, 13. Yeah. That made me feel like I was in control of a relationship and I could be the master, I could be the teacher, I could be, you know, uh, in charge, which in my life would never happened. so... He's uh, now arrived and is about to meet, or what he thinks is a 13-year-old girl. Terence Briscoe flew from Queensland to Perth, expecting to meet a young teenager he'd groomed online. 
in fact, he'd unwittingly exposed his sick fantasies to the WA police. So here he's saying that he would like to teach her about sex. Yep. And here he says, well, I like young girls and I like you. That's correct. That's pretty forward. And it looked quite demanding. I need you in a skirt. I mean... Yep, that's right. And as you can see there, he's even talked about no panties. He was prepared to say all this to an innocent 13-year-old. While he was planning sex with a minor, the WA police was planning an arrest. And here in the heart of Perth, they nab him. In about, uh, about four or five hours' time, he'll be in a jail cell. How much time did he get? Yeah, he was sentenced to um, 18 months jail. In the end, Terence Briscoe served just nine months. He's remorseful, but still in denial. Are you a pedophile? No, no, definitely not. But let's let's look at what you did, okay? You you engage with what you believe is a 13-year-old girl. Yeah. You groom her for sex. Yeah. You're explicit in what you want to do with her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I she's, can't, I can't she's deny a 13-year-old girl. That makes you a pedophile. Okay, if that's the way you like to see it. I... No, that's not the way I like to see it. That's what you are. Okay, I am then. <laughs> Terence but, claims he never acted on his desires until his trip to Perth, but admits there are many real 13-year-olds he contacted over the internet, indulging in explicit conversations that would horrify most parents. And what you're telling me is that you did it more than once. So we know that you've been caught once, right? Which means that you were doing this with a police officer, mm. thankfully. Mm. But you've also been doing this with other young girls. Yes, possibly, yeah. And how would you describe your behaviour in those chat rooms? Disgusting. So how many other disgusting individuals do you think are out there at the moment preying on kids? Thousands. Thousands. And tragically, Carly Ryan's story reveals just how deadly some of these perverts can be. This is the last time 14-year-old Carly was seen alive, and the man with her is her murderer, a depraved internet predator who won her trust in the most chilling and audacious way. He went to considerable lengths to manipulate her and deceive her and basically lured her with a promise of love. That's what he used. This is the starting of my 24-hour She's so cute. Hmm. You must miss that. Yes, I do. I miss her hearing her voice and hearing her laugh and watching her be silly. And... Carly's mum, Sonia, says her innocent daughter was no match for the calculating 50-year-old who targeted her. He attracted Carly on the social networking site MySpace by creating a fake profile. He pretended to be 20-year-old Brandon Kane and, according to Sonia, was every schoolgirl's dream. She thought he was very good looking. He was a guitarist in a band in Melbourne. In Carly's eyes, I guess the perfect boyfriend. So everything rang true for you? Uh, I guess I had no reason to believe otherwise. How excited was Carly about her birthday party? Very excited. She was really looking forward to it. In an elaborate online ruse, Carly's murderer contrived a way to meet her. He set up a second profile as Brandon's father, Shane, and arranged to drop off birthday presents at her Adelaide home. She was really excited to meet his dad and wanted to get to know his family. To know that this monster came into your house, came here, is something that horrifies me to think that a calculating pedophile child murderer came into our home and that I couldn't see it. So convincing, Shane stayed for a few days, but finally unnerved by his interest in Carly, Sonia ordered him out of the house and her daughter to end all contact with him. But he now had such a hold on Carly, she told her mum she was staying overnight with friends and went to meet him. So she uh, grabbed her bag at about four o'clock in the afternoon and um, she looked really, really pretty and she gave me about four hugs at the door. Sorry, it's OK. And then proceeded to walk um, off the veranda and she said, um, 
Shane convinced Carly to travel with him to the beaches of Port Elliot, a quiet village nearly an hour and a half from home. Carly was so trusting that even till the end, she had no idea how much danger she was in. After meeting up with Shane, it's believed she suggested they come here to Horseshoe Bay. Her grandmother lived just around the corner and she'd come here often as a child. Clearly, Carly felt safe, but her death was brutal. Her murderer attacked her from behind, punching her in the head, pushing her face into the sand before throwing her into the water, leaving her to drown. When police walked into his home, what was he doing? He was logged in as Brandon came, talking to another girl in Perth that looked just like Carly. How old was she? 14, I think. Um, he had 200 profiles of young men that he pretended to be online. We've since discovered. And fake profiles are the very tactic police use to turn the tables on these cyber pedophiles. Who does he believe he's talking to online? When he first met this uh, profile, he thought it was a 12-year-old and she's had a birthday in that time, and so now he believes he's talking to a 13-year-old girl. This is the, the location that we've uh, arranged to meet him at. Back in um, Perth, the online child exploitation squad is getting ready to pounce on their latest predator, the 42-year-old father of two. Uh, that's Kent Street Road there, so he'll be um, dropping straight down there. Only one way in and out. He's arranged to meet the 13-year-old at the toilet block in this popular park. Undercover police are ready and waiting. Another team sits off his house to follow him to the park. Oh, that's him. He's just passed us. That's him. Yeah, I've just confirmed that that's him. No worries, just uh, maintain a loose, very loose um, spell, thanks. Boxy, just for your info, he's got what looks like two beach towels up against the front passenger and back passenger window. Online, he'd said he would cover the windows of the car so they could have sex unseen. Windows? Uh, windows. So it seems like it's come prepared, ready to go. And from just hearing that, he should be in the car park any minute now. Roger, I'm ten minutes away. He's just into the car yes, park. Yes, that's him there. That's him there. He's going around to the left. He circles the car park, slowing as he passes the toilet block before parking. He's just parking up now. He's he parked right next to me. Well, we're going in. OK. Caught. One predator who hunted in the cyber world will serve his time, up to a maximum of three years, in a real jail. Well, well done. Thanks, it's been a good result. It's a good feeling? Yeah, yeah. It feels very good once everything comes together and, uh, and this is one man that certainly won't be endangering any, any kids in the near future. You're one sick individual, aren't you, sir? Why would you want to have sex with a 13-year-old? Back at the police station, this pedophile is now on his way to the lockup. How many other 13-year-olds no, have you been talking never. to online? Never. <laughs> he tells me he went to the park for a stroll. If you weren't there to have sex with her, what were you doing there? Trust me. I don't trust you. I'm innocent. You're innocent, are you? Really? You know, it's the 13-year-olds who are innocent. Men like you aren't innocent. Just like this bloke, most men caught end up pleading guilty, so compelling is the evidence against them. In fact, the squad hasn't lost a case yet. So when you met with that girl then today, if she'd shown up, what would you have done? Nothing. Nothing. Up close, these men are pathetic, but that doesn't make them any less of a threat. How long do you think the fantasies would have gone on for? How many girls do you think you would have met if you hadn't been caught out by the police? That's something I don't know. I honestly don't know. Would it be fair to say that it's unlikely it would have stopped? I mean, if it felt that good, why stop? You didn't y think yes. it was wrong, yeah, why no, stop? No, I agree. And I, and I said the best thing I ever did was actually meet the police. Is there any way to describe the grief? No. Um, I would not want any parent to have to look at their child with no life in them, ever.
Carly's murderer is yet to be sentenced. For Sonia, the only way to carry on with her life has been to set up a foundation in Carly's name to educate young people about the dangers of the internet. Her message, there are predators online and they will do anything to manipulate and hurt you. Where do you find the strength to do that, to keep going? From Carly. Because um, she would be the first one to say, Mum, don't let this happen to another girl. Get out there, let people know what happened to me, how I was deceived. <sighs> She'd want me to shout it to the world. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.